ba doop ba doop doop and we're live. Hey, I'm here with uh, Aaron Sheehan, lead consultant at Classy Llama, the classiest of llamas. And uh, we are, how's it going, man? How you doing? It's going good. Going well. It's May the 4th. So um, there's Star Wars stuff all over the place, which is, which is, which is really nice. What's going on with the Star I'm, I've, I've, I don't know as much as I should about Star Wars. What's the deal with Star Wars, there are they launching? Well, so in the late seventies, this guy named George Lucas made a movie. I oh, I've heard of him. I've heard of Lucas. I've heard of this. Okay. Lucas, yeah, it does does ring a bell. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And now Disney owns it, and it's it's everywhere. And there are going to be movies and toys every year for the rest of our lives and our children. <laughs> is there some coming out so, today? Well, no. It's I think this is a bit of a, a made up holiday. It's you know, you may the force be with you is a thing from Star Wars, and someone said, you know what? Can we make that a, a, a day to like sell toys? And so they came up with May the Fourth. Got it. So it's like May the Fourth with, with a lisp, and Got so uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's it. it's that works. There's Star Wars. Stuff. That works. So it's it's pretty cool. Nice. Um, it's funny. I, I I heard this. Um, I heard this whole uh podcast episode on all these holidays that there are. You know, National Hug a Sysadmin Day, and you know, and and there's um. The, the, there's a woman that created like I, I want to say hundreds or even a thousand holidays and there's like a process for filing them or whatever huh. and uh, I, I think I w- might have been on Planet Money or something like that are you a pod okay. do you listen to Planet Money you listen to uh, yeah. from time to time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and they, they interviewed her and uh, it was it was so it's, it's interesting but um uh, so we are going to be talking a little bit about, um, M1 to M2 migration type stuff as the, um, you know, that's a big topic right now. A lot of merchants that I talk to are trying to figure that out and are, you know, in various uh, situations as far as, you know, whether they might have something in flight with M1, maybe they're building new on M2, maybe they're already on M2. Um, so you've dealt with that a lot. You've talked with dozens of merchants or something like that in in uh, recent years, and so I thought it'd be cool to chat with you about that. Um, so you uh, tell the people a little bit about yourself. How did you actually? How did you get into working with Classy and e-commerce and stuff? Sure. Uh, well, it's a bit of a bit of chance. Um, I uh, was from Springfield, Missouri, which is not a, a huge a huge tech town. Um, there's a place. You guys are but, changing uh, that though. It is actually. It really is. But I had worked at a uh, a startup here in town uh, several years ago, uh, and we were we were we were trying to disrupt the insurance software uh, really? industry, which is as exciting as it sounds. Um, that does sound. And exciting. I'm feeling all excited about I mean, it right now. Deductibles and like reinsurance, all kinds of things. Um, but. The, the, our CFO at that company is actually sort of uh, advisory CFO uh, for, for Classy Obama, and they were looking for a, uh, a business analyst. And I had worked with this guy before, and he recommended me. And uh, like I heard, so and funny, funny enough, our startup at the time was right next door to Classy Llama's old old uh, place. So I knew who Classy Llama was. I knew the, the stuffed llama thing. Like I knew the hats, the uh, the the uh, uh, you know, curtains, books, and things like that. So oh, nice. I knew of, 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 of them. So uh, came on board. Um, with, uh, I had never heard of Magento. Right? Oh, nice. Well, and, and so how, how long ago was it that you started with Classy? Two years. Two years. Two, Two years. years. Yeah. I've been in software, sort of, you know, uh, software and business and how they connect in various various fields here, here for, for several years before that, but, but not Magento. Nice. So. And and incidentally, that's right around the time that um, you guys started really doing all your really shifting over to M two. Um, was it late? When did you guys when did you guys start doing like all your new builds in M two? Um, I would say basically Q one of twenty sixteen, right? So so M two G eight in November twenty eighteen. Uh, or November of 20, sorry, I was doing my EOL uh, mixed up in 2015. And uh, we we decided to just go ahead and, and pay the dumb tax, you know, immediately rather than show title, awesome. pay the dumb tax. <laughs> Got to do that. Um, and so, yeah, so all of our like new new projects that were started post GA, I've been on Magento 2. Nice. Nice. And um, 
So, so in the in the um, in uh, 2016, it was mostly there wasn't a lot of migration happening, right? People were still kind of waiting to see. Mm-hmm. Newer builds were the main the main thing that was going on. Yeah. So what we saw a lot of in 20, 2016 were people who had already decided on Magento, and since Magento stopped selling enterprise licenses for one dot fourteen. Um, that meant that if they wanted to be on Magento, they had to be on two. So um, that's pretty much what 2016 was. Was that, that the people who had already made the, the purchase, the decision to, to, to you know migrate a replatform or start a new business on Magento, going ahead and and, and getting getting going on that. Right. So right. Um, I would say on the upgrade side, most most folks were waiting because a lot of them had just gone through the like 1.14, 1.9, you know, responsive. Uh, redesign pretty recently and there was no compelling reason for them to like go be guinea pigs. I mean, um, I, you know, I have not yet met a merchant who is enthusiastic about the idea of uh, beta testing software. Uh, <laughs> Shocking. Being an early doctor, yeah. I, I don't know why, especially in like November, December. I mean, what a great time to like, you know. <laughs> the holidays are happening. What, what could be yeah, a better time? Quiet, to- quiet around here. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. right. And so, um, so yeah, so then it, uh, when, when do you think people start to get comfortable with the idea of uh, starting to migrate um, M1, M2? So we started hearing a lot of interest right after Imagine 2016. So, right, that was the like, hey, we're no longer part of eBay. Hey, Magento 2, lots of like excitement and buzz. Um, 2.1 drops. Um, there were some new features in it. it like, new features from Magento? Um, so, um, <laughs> uh, uh, and so I think there was a lot of, that, that's when, especially merchants where they, they're like, hey, what's an upgrade? And, and, and we're like, well, it's really, it's a migration. It's not like you're going to be, you're going to be rebuilding a lot of stuff. It's going to be a significant project. That's what we told everyone. So, oh, and so in 2016, it was, Significant project. Let me go talk to my CFO. We'll see if I can get capex money for the next year to do this kind of thing. Like, um, so yeah. that was so that was when right. the interest really started. Right, right. And I mean, ba- backing up a little bit, what what types of merchants do you guys deal with in terms? If you could classify them, some you guys are obviously an enterprise partner, and so mm-hmm. you're dealing with the big boys to a certain extent. But what types of merchants do you, are you talking to? It's a pretty wide range, um, and we do a lot of community edition work too, and always have. Um, but um, I'd say a lot of what we've done lately has been has been enterprise. But um, I'd say our our merchants range anywhere from the one to fifty million a year online range in all sorts of different verticals and um, use cases. We got there's a lot of B two B. We've done a lot of B two B work for people. Um, We've done a lot in sort of the automotive, like mechanical parts and things like that. The, the less sexy e-commerce applications, maybe like um, so. Like we don't. I don't think we were selling like designer swimwear. I don't think we have any clients doing that. But, but if you want, <laughs> because you could products, do some serious. Mo- I mean, you could double double dip with a little bit of modeling for. for I mean, that. I mean, really. I mean, this is this this beard is 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 money. Like, that beard should sell some swimwear. This is all I'm saying. I think so. I think so. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. And the, the yeah, automotive I stuff. That, actually, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna take that actually to Kurt and see if I can get a side a side a side hustle going. So you inspired in. me. Thank you. Pull him in. Yep. We'll get, we'll get yep. approval right here live. Um, Got no, it. Yeah. No, <laughs> the the automotive stuff can get. I mean, you can start. You know, getting into some pretty serious catalog situations with all the parts and combinations. Oh yeah. Fitment, you know, the, the, the concept of, of, of knowing like what, what vehicle somebody has and then what parts fit that vehicle. And um, yeah, there's a lot that goes into the, the catalog and search experiences uh, for automotive are, are fairly unique. So, right. But right, we've been right, doing right. a lot of it. So we, we've got a pretty good handle on it. Right. Is there, um, is there a vertical that you would say, you know, has been migrating more quickly? That's that the migration has been easier for, more conducive, made more sense in terms of feature set or level of pain in general, or you know, is it pretty, pretty well? Hmm, that's a good question. I, 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 so I'm sort of thinking through. 
I can't, I, you know, there's really not a common thread. I, it has less to do with the merchant that's selling and a lot more to do with where they are in the life cycle of the business and sort of their operational complexity. Um, really, so like if somebody already has a responsive site and it's working for them and it's fast and scalable enough for them, Generally speaking, no matter what they sell, they don't have a compelling reason to go to Magento 2 quite. They haven't up to, up to this point, I think. Um, that's changing, right? Every day we get closer to 2018, you know, November 2018, that case gets a little stronger. But up to this point, it's been it had a lot more to do with, well, if I didn't have a responsive site or um, I, I, my site is old, maybe it's responsive, maybe it's just old, or maybe I'm having performance and scaling, or maybe I've grown 300%, right, since maybe I'm a community merchant who needs to upgrade to enterprise, and there's no reason to, to like, upgrade to 1.14 at this point for them, so they're, they're, they're making the switch to, um, so. Right, right. Right. I mean, and you, you I mean, have so many, so um, um Trying to hear some feedback. Um, um, you've had so you've many had conversations, so many conversations with, with, with merchants. With merchants. Um, what are what are what are some of the like what are some of the biggest questions that come up? Concerns with with regard to the upgrade. You mean like the yeah? I mean, money is a big one, right? It's it's uh, uh, it's it's a, it's it's a significant project, right? To to upgrade to, to from from one to two. Uh, you don't you don't right click and save as M2 and all my all my files go, go rebuild stuff and so and honestly a big big part of that is we so so a conversation I've had a lot of times is hey I've got a Magento one site I had it for three or four years we've got customizations and extensions installed and we don't know if they're active we don't know what they do we don't know if they're working um, there's often a feeling that. My Magento store has a lot, my Magento one store has a lot of stuff in it and it makes me uncomfortable and I don't know why that stuff is there. So right. there's usually some sort of like audit, technical auditing, business process auditing that goes into the Magento two upgrade process that is, hey, what do we need to do to operate? We made decisions about how our store should be set up four or five years ago. Our business is totally different. Nobody's business is the same you know, four to five years later, do we need the same stuff? Do we need different stuff? Um, that's, that's those, that, that process, there's usually a certain amount of like internal soul searching that happens um, right. as, as part of the, part of the upgrade process. Right. Right. And when they're, um, when they, when they're looking at that, what is that? I mean, let's take, I don't know if, they, if there's a typical, you know, merch, maybe they're doing a million a year in sales or something like that. What is that? How do you how do you structure those engagements? How much time do you budget to figure that out? I'm sure it varies based on you know how many hundreds of extensions they have installed. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Who the extension vendors are very important. Yep. Um, not to, I'm not gonna. I don't want to shame anybody if Bill's watching. Name them and um, shame them. Name them and shame them. Oh, not me. Not me. Not me. <laughs> um, but. Uh, it, it has uh, it, it has a lot to do with the the merchant. Honestly, do they have a technical staff that they have a dev team, like an internal dev team that they are working with, who who pretty much knows like, oh, these modifications have been made to these files, and here's why. And I've got this API user in Magento that's connecting to this system, and here's why, and here's how often, like that kind of stuff. If they know all of that, then this process goes really quickly. Mm. And what is really if they what's don't, really quickly? What's really quickly on on that end of the spectrum? Usually, right. I mean. Uh, if, if they have that information ready to hand, there's really then then you you have the information. Then it's this decision making time. So if it's okay, here's the information. The developer gives the decision maker the information, and then the decision maker to say, okay, yes, we want this. No, we don't. We want this version. We want this extension to live in into the same way we have in one. Or no, we don't. Or we we kind of do, but we want it differently, right? That 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 if if somebody's paying attention, I mean, that can happen pretty quickly. It's the it's the gathering of facts that sometimes can take a while. If there's nobody. You know, there's a lot of institutional memory in, in, in merchants, right? It's not um, pe people, people, people are too busy to write things down, right? Yeah. Nobody, nobody's business is as well documented as they wish that it that it was. That's just how it goes. And you speak the truth. When when I when I recently sold my business, they said, "Hey, go go document everything," and I was like, "Uh, okay." <laughs> you know, yeah. and that's yeah. not a complex business. Yeah. 
Right. And yet there's so much, like so much institutional stuff that it's just like, Oh yeah, I knew, I know that because I was involved, but I never wrote it down. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so depending on how, how like, you know, uh, operationally aware, uh, the e-commerce side of that business is uh, that, that process can take, you know, a month <laughs> of meetings and digging through, digging through code and digging through old emails and stuff like that. Like, why, why are we, why are we doing that? Like, right. So, right. Yeah. Why are we it's, taking that point? Uh, I, I don't know. It, it was a good idea. Somebody wrote a blog post that said it was a good idea. And so we, we did. And, and do we still need to do that? Like, like that kind of thing. Like how many transactions have we done? Like legit questions. Right. And sometimes you, you're like, okay, at the end of that, you're like, okay, let's go ahead and, and make sure we support that as, as a, as a KPI for the, for the migration in too. And sometimes you're like, mm, nah. So, yeah, yeah, totally. And, uh, so, so there, so there is this, um, this, uh, email that, uh, that went around that made the rounds that, um, that, uh, Shopify was emailing Magento merchants <laughs> and, um, <laughs> we're going to touch on this just brief, ever so briefly. Lightly. Um, just lightly, touch on it. lightly. We're just going to light touch, very light touch. Um, and so, you know, they were saying, look, Hey, it's going to cost X amount of dollars to upgrade. You're going to lose PCI compliance. You're going to be on unsupported software when Magento went in, uh, end of lives. And, um, so you had, you had some thoughts on that. And I, and I love the fact that, you know, you're, you're willing to speak openly about, like we were talking before the show and you're saying, look, um, it's about what's best for the merchant. Like, you know, we're all, we all love Magento, you know, uh, you guys are a partner, but you know, you're going to recommend what makes sense for them. If they sell t-shirts and don't have any complexity, then, you know, other, other options can make sense, but, uh, mm -hmm. right. So. Right. Yeah. So, uh, well, there, so there's a lot there. Um, so, so we'll, let's, let's go with the email. We'll start with the email, maybe, since that's the that was the, the, the sort of impetus here. Um, so I saw that email um, uh, on I think your Twitter feed probably, because uh, it got retweeted a few times. Um, and uh, to make a Star Wars reference that you, that you might not get, uh, what Shopify has said is true from a certain point of view. Okay. Uh, so, so, so like the, the two you're in are, deep man you're in deep on the star wars oh, things you got references yeah, on hand yeah. for every situation oh, yeah. <laughs> and every time i think i know a lot i realize that my wife is way bigger of a dork than i am when it comes to star wars wow that's where you say i picked a winner i know i picked a winner yeah. yeah um so yeah yes magento is end of life and Magento one is end of life and unsupported in November 2018. Although I can't seem to find that written down anywhere. I went hunting the other day and I couldn't find an actual official communication about that. Uh, yeah, I know some other people that were also hunting of the ecosystem, and yet there's no canonical. I don't know. So, I saw some tweets. So I believe I believe there's a tweet and there's some talks that are recorded, but yeah, it's it's strangely somebody has like Paul Bear on camera like. Like saying, committing to, right? Okay, right. Cool, cool. Okay, good. Well, if Paul says it. Um, I, I believe it. Uh, uh, so, assuming that that happens, right? It is true that there will be no official support for security patches and bug fixes and things like that for for Magento One. Will the community, the community, step up and and? And fork it and decide to you know um, you know support PHP build in support for PHP seven and and, and everything else um, possibly I don't know if that will be one specific community project uh, if that happens or it'll be a lot of individual merchants having internal teams and agencies do that for their particular um, installations you know uh, probably a combination of the two right like that's what usually happens is. Somebody tries, starts an open source thing, gets it going, has to figure out how to monetize it, because that the level of effort to actually do that correctly is not insignificant, and the monitoring and proactive um, uh, involvement is going to be not insignificant, and it's certainly more efficient for merchants if there's one place to go to get like, you know, Magento one support after after end of life. But here's the thing is, is that's all conjecture, right? I mean, maybe you know, is, is there somebody who's sort of setting up as an agency or, no, or partner? Not, after this? Is that 
Not that I know of. I mean, you, me- you, mentioned, um, you mentioned, um, I swear to, I keep getting this feedback. I keep getting this feedback. The, uh, you mentioned PHP seven support. There is, uh, there is an extension, uh, Inchu did for PHP seven support for M one, which I just used somewhat recently and it worked great. Um, so, you know, little things like that, uh, uh I'm sure will continue to, to come together. Um, yeah. but it'll be, I mean, it'll be interesting to see, for example, if, you know, if a couple thousand merchants, um, needed to stay on M1 for a little while longer past end of life, you know, maybe they get together and fund uh, a, uh, the bug crowd program or something like mm-hmm. that a little bit longer. Yeah. Bug, I, bug yeah. I, I mean, I know every, I mean, M2 is the future. Everybody's moving to that. That's a given. I'm, I'm just as somebody who's still in M1 world, I'm just, it's something that fascinates me and the open source nature of the community. It's something that fascinates me to see what's going to happen there. Um, right. But well, um, are you familiar with um, are you familiar with Zoe? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are you you know you talked no. to Yuri and so yeah yeah we talked to him briefly and and um I, they're they're doing some interesting stuff but but yeah that that's a, cool. a, that's a bit of a that's a bit of a that's a that's a bit of a similar thing right I mean they took they took the M one core and forked it and it's now I mean bits and pieces are recognizable as Magento but it's it's quite different right? it's a SAS it's it's, it's it's Magento it's is it fair to call Magento Go done right? I, I don't think know. it is. I think, I think it fair. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how widely adopted. You know, how many merchants are using it or anything like that. But it is uh, that almost that idea of here's an open source project. We're gonna we're gonna turn it into a product, right? That's super common. And yeah. we're gonna figure out a way to make an actual business out of it that that actually you know meets people's needs. Yeah, as opposed to being on prem, right? It's 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 out there tilting at Shopify and big commerce. But um, yep. uh, maybe something similar will happen. Um, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe everybody will just go to Zoe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no. And they and uh, actually, um, I was chatting with Yuri a, a bit about it recently, and um, I I still haven't fully wrapped my head around how the platform works. It's compatible with some extensions, but it is something different. I know they have some documentation and they've been doing more of that and they have an interesting migration path. Um, so that's yeah. definitely something. NCR did this, right? Uh, NRO, the, in, you know, NCR, uh, the, the, the point of sale, you know, folks, they had a, they had a product called, called uh, NRO and it was Magento 1.7 uh, hosted with a handful of extensions. Um, so you're a merchant, you're using the NCR, uh, this is a PCI hardware that had Magento as a back. This is, this is, this is, this is their, their hosting Magento. And I don't know the, the specifics of the hosting architecture. If it was, you know, you, you got a dedicated box or it was, you know, cloud or, or what exactly, okay. but yeah, it, but it was hands off. It was not on prem Magento one. It was, they hosted it. They managed it. They had a curated set of, of extensions that you could install. There was, you know, you had a little catalog you could go to. But the merchants didn't have access to the DB. The merchants didn't have access to the file system. Right? Okay. You, it, was, it was it was totally locked locked down, hands off, slightly forked, um, and it was one point seven, and it's probably still out there actually. Um, oh, that's interesting. I don't think I ever heard of that. Uh, yeah, we run into it uh, every so often um, for, for, for people interested in, in alternatives, but. Um, yeah, so I'm saying I'm just saying there's more than one sort of model of somebody taking like community edition and, and yeah, with it. totally yeah. So I mean, how do you um, how do you approach the question with them? You know, as we know, um, if if somebody's on M1, uh, they may have gotten onto it seven years ago. The the um, uh, the environment for e-commerce software was very different back then. They have different choices today. How do you help them navigate that decision? How do you look at, well, what's the complexity of your business? What do you need? What do you not need? Who does M2 sure. make sense for? Mm-hmm. Great questions. Great questions. Uh, so I'll start by saying we're Classy Lava is a Magento enterprise partner, and we only develop on Magento. So we're one of, I think, very few agencies who who don't um, who, like have like maybe a wife and a girlfriend. I don't know. Is that <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're working it really hard to do a show title because I've got edit, like yeah, I've got two or three uh, oh, very viable lot, options right. now for a show title. Uh, okay, well, um, with that said, I mean that doesn't mean that and that, that Magento is the right answer for literally every merchant on the planet, right? Like, 
there's there's room for there's room for multiple solutions to exist in the ecosystem. And so often when I'm working with with emergent, people throw around GMV a lot as sort of a proxy for well, um, you know, if you're if you're doing you know. 100,000 to, to 750,000, you should be on Shopify. And if you're, uh, you know, a million plus, you should be on Magento. And if you're doing 100 million, you should be on Demandware or whatever, right? Like, um, but, but, but ultimately, revenue is a bit of a, it's a bit of a, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice way to segment things for marketers, but it's not really a great indicator of, of a tech, what, what's a good technical solution for someone. Because if I'm able to make $50 million a year online selling six products that are all simple products, because my brand is so freaking awesome that people are lining up and I'm doing flash sales and yeah. I'm, on, I'm, I'm promoting it, but I've got six products and I have a, maybe I have a, a very modern order management system or API driven ERP in the background and I don't need file system access, and I don't need database access, and I don't need multiple product types. I'm selling shirts, right? That's it. And the, the value prop is the brand. Probably I don't need a, a complicated dev stack. I don't want, what I need is I need, I need the ability to go add a Facebook tracking pixel without having to um, call my dev shop, right? Yeah. Um, I live in analytics. I don't live in the the guts of my e-commerce system because they're not. It's just it's 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 a, it's a it's the complexity isn't there. Maybe for, for for folks like that, I don't know that Magento is always the right answer. Uh, maybe maybe and I think the answer is maybe. And I think the 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 trick is don't have a preconceived notion of where merch what merchants should be using based on some sort of like arbitrary guideline. You have to talk right as a, as a consultant. At any e-commerce agency, my duty to the merchant is to talk to them and learn before I make a recommendation, and and that is that comes above partnerships and and um, picking sides. You know, um, certainly, it's great. certainly, if if you go on if you go on uh, e-commerce related social media, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the Magento subreddit and the e-commerce subreddit, right? Okay. Uh, there's a lot of um, uh, soreness there. Uh, people have. That's a very right? light, light way, to, light touch way to say it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and I can, I can understand some of the points. Um, and people are very quick to like, well, this, this platform, this platform is terrible, and it's, it's all, it's all bad, and they're all liars, and, um, and you should go, uh, you should go use, you know, this new hotness over here, right? Um, so and so right. raised their prices, and now uh, they, they they stink and they're terrible, right? You're going to charge me, you know. I, I mean, it's, it's, I've seen people complaining about. Um, I'm, I saw my e-commerce business that I'm making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, millions of dollars a year online, and somebody gets upset because they raise the monthly the monthly uh, fee from eighty dollars to like two hundred dollars. Right. 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 You're like, bro, like, really? I mean, you know, I get that it was an increase, but um, you wouldn't, uh, if, if somebody's doing brick and mortar retail, right? Like the cheapest real estate you can find is going to be a couple of welded together, double wide trailers on the outskirts of town. <laughs> so if that's how you're making your decision, unless you're selling meth, uh, that's probably not a great place to put your show, your store. <laughs> um, but if you're, it, it, it's about what's right for what you're selling. So, um, right. Right. That um that's really interesting I, and and uh you know you you've you've thrown out some some interesting uh, uh examples and you've talked with so many you probably have some other uh examples of types of merchants or archetypes what are some of the common um issues you see that do, that do make it make sense to go to M2 or to go elsewhere We've talked ERP, we've talked database access, we've talked, you know, hey, if you're just selling t-shirts, um, you know, also I think you had some thoughts on product type, you know, bundled product, you know, right. what, are, what are some of the common things you see there? Well, so, I mean, the great, the, the beauty of Magento has always been, and, 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 and will continue to be, I think, the flexibility. Um, if I'm constantly evolving as a business, if I'm bringing on new product types, if I want to start selling kits, 
if I want to uh, create a new CMS experience, if I want to add a new payment method or start shipping with a new carrier. That's, I can do all that. I may have to, for some things, get an install extension or work with a development agency depending on what I'm doing. If I want to start selling B2B, I mean, honestly, that happens a lot, right? I've got somebody who's, who they decided that they're, they're, they're selling direct, they want to start selling direct to the consumer or they're selling direct to the consumer and they want to start selling directly to warehouses or to their, to their uh, resellers and retailers. Yeah. And maybe right now that's a, people fax those orders in and they're like, wow, well, we should bring that online. Like, you know, that would be cool. So it does great. Like that's, you can do anything you want to with it. Um, and so for people who embrace that sort of, they, they, that flexibility as a core piece of their business, why am I in business? Because I am paying attention to the market and I am willing and able to make the investment to change direction and open up new avenues, move in, go international and things like that. You probably want something like, uh, you probably want Magento or something very like it. And there isn't anything else quite like it. So you want Magento, right? There you go. Yeah. It's a, it's a <laughs> film like it. Partner to be there, um, but if if that's not who you are, if 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 your thing is, you know, I'm selling I'm selling something simply, and I don't I don't have grand plans to to go international. I don't have grand plans to embrace, um, you know, new product lines. Uh, I've got one thing I know it really well, and I'm going to do that. And if that aligns with a SaaS offering for an e-commerce platform, so be it. I mean. Right, businesses evolve. What's right for you today may not be right for you in two or three years too. So it's you gotta you gotta be always thinking about the future. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really cool. Um, that makes sense. Um, well, this is great, man. I think we've covered a lot of uh, territory. I'm just peeking at my notes to see whether there was any any other uh, things we wanted to get through. Um, I think we talked a little bit about um, you know subscriptions is one thing that uh, that can be tricky. Uh, to do, um, you know, uh, in, in Shopify, for example, but, um, well, cool. yeah, but yeah, this is great, man. Any, um, any last thoughts, anything I missed, anything that, uh, comes to mind you wanted to share or, uh, well, let's see. I, I was, I wanted to ask you, uh, what are you, what are you up to? Right. So you sold, you sold Mage Mail. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a great, it's a great product. Um, I have, ha I have, have happy customers using it. Um, thanks man. What's, uh, what's next for, 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 for Kalen, the serial entrepreneur, right? I mean, you're doing a lot of content now. Um, I've just, I, I'd love to hear where's your, where's your mind going right now? Obviously you're tackling the, 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 the hiring and sourcing thing. Is that, that, is that keeping you, is that, yeah. is that, is that the future? Yeah. So that's, um, so I'm, um, yeah. I've actually been working on, um, Commerce Hero full time for the past seven months or so. Um, so um, I'm uh, that's that's definitely my focus, and I'm I'm really working on getting it off the ground. And um, so it's uh, it, it's it's been um, actually I was thinking I want to do a little video, kind of talking a little bit about the experience of building an extension and stuff. But um, it was it was a really cool experience to to be able to well. I don't know if cool. It was it was a little hard. I mean, it's always hard. <laughs> we were we were talking about documenting your business and stuff, right? Um, but that was a, that was a great experience. And so now I'm I'm uh, got a little chunk of change, not enough to retire off of quite yet. <laughs> so uh, so I'm uh, yeah. So I'm doing that. You know, this it's um, it's something that I've I've heard about. Um, you know, for many years. Like man, it's so hard to find a good developer. And so yeah. I was talking to uh, Eric, uh, Eric Heilman at Mage Mojo, who's, who's my uh, my partner uh, in this venture. And um, he was like, uh, we were talking about some ideas and and uh, we both sort of had this in our minds simultaneously. And so we we're like, yeah, let's do it. Um, I'm kind of fascinated, you know, Mage Mail was a SaaS product and I'm kind of fascinated with a marketplace business model. Mm -hmm. um, you see a lot of, uh, Marketplace models, whether it's Airbnb or Uber, or Thumbtack, um, Angie's List, all these all these uh, sites. So it was kind of fascinated with that as a business model, and and wanted to uh, try to attack it. Um, 
and you know it's a little it's a little tricky and uh but um and then and then so as i've been thinking about how to uh promote it and how to uh grow it i've been dipping into content a little bit with like this interview and some of the videos and stuff like that i was doing um some facebook ads recently have you done much in the way of uh facebook ads i've personally I've heard... for, I, 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 so i i mean our, for our clients yes uh personally no yeah I don't yeah think so yeah, because I've I've heard a lot about Facebook ads from a lot of different people, and so I was like, yeah, let's they're, figure they're that out. Pretty good. Um, there are some there's some people I think for whom that makes more sense than 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 uh, Google than than AdWords actually, but um, depending on what you know what you're doing. But, I think yeah. so. Yeah, and you can target you know very specifically. You know, uh -huh. and traditionally the thing with Facebook ads was well, that's for tar you know consumer audiences, and I as have a, have a B two B audience. Um, but I had heard, you know, that, that you can start to make them work for B2B. So getting into that and then it was like, well, the best types of ads are video ads. So then so I started, you know, doing a little bit of video. Um, and, uh, so that's been fun. I did that for about a month or so. Um, I got some, some good leads and it was an interesting learning process. Um, I, I, I think I'm going to put, put the, hit the pause button on those campaigns though and see how the leads kind of pan out. Um, right. But, yeah, the way I think of it is is fa Facebook ads let you get in front of people based on who they are, right? And AdWords is getting in front of people based on what they search for. So yep. depending on you know how much how much good like segmentation data you have and how how well you can like really drill into who are you who are you trying to reach, I think I think it makes a lot of sense. Has it worked for you? I mean. It's worked okay. I, I've tried. Um, I've tried some different things. I've tried um, video ads. I've tried. Uh, they have so many different types of ads. There's lead gen ads where you can get the email address within Facebook natively, and I was getting about a. Uh, I was doing like a three dollar cost per acquisition at one point for for an email lead, which was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but then it, but it it shoots up like that's the kind of the thing, and the audiences aren't that big. It's not like I'm targeting a you know you know 10 million uh size audience um so if i'm targeting magento or even e-commerce or whatever they tend to be a little smaller so then the cost per lead would go up to 15 20 bucks um and then i i tend to shut it down but you know it's uh if, if it, it very well may be that that's actually a decent cost per lead for me um it takes a while to figure out exactly what your you know, customer lifetime value is. And so that's a little tricky for me. Um, right. I have a wide range of types of customers. Somebody could come through, hire somebody for a thousand dollar project. I get, we get 10% of that. So it's a hundred bucks or they could hire a hundred thousand dollar full-time employee. We get 10%, we get uh, 10,000. So there's a very wide range of types of customers and nailing that down. I probably need to um, segment a little better in the way I'm marketing to uh, different types of customers as far as some a merchant you know that's why I get fascinated by this discussion around types of merchants and and uh, what uh, kind of segment they're in for what merchant does it make sense to use a freelancer versus an agency versus right. hiring in-house and you were talking a little bit about uh, level of, of expertise how much technical expert I have you know a merchant that wants to hire somebody full-time in-house but they don't have any technical team they don't have any infrastructure so that's you know kind of kind yeah. of interesting i saw you the interview you did with laura falco the same name right they like, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. uh the other day and, and that was that was really interesting right because on the agency side we're often working with with folks like who her who are freelance and have long-term relationships as like a single a single dev supporting a merchant and 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 who for most things that's actually a really good fit uh, and then when some sort of like large intensive project comes along, like upgrading the gender two, where it's like I gotta rebuild the theme, I gotta redo like everything, we get to, we get to partner um, with 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 those folks. And it was it was it was really interesting hearing her experience uh, there and and her take on that whole relationship and the you know subcontracting and all the fun fun that is. Um, it's a good. It was. A, it was. A, it was a really interesting perspective to hear. Yeah, there's and there's, there's so many interesting um, combinate like combinations of uh, uh, interactions that 
uh, different, you know, types of entities will have with each other. So, so you just mentioned you might get brought in as an agency, as an enterprise partner to work partner with somebody that's a freelancer. Um, and then sometimes, uh, you know, you'll work with a, an in-house employee. Uh, sometimes I've even, I've even seen agencies sub out, you know, their resources to one another. Mm -hmm. um, so agencies yeah. can sub out resources to one another. Uh, yep. You know, freelancers can work with agencies temporarily. Then maybe it works out. They can go in house. Yeah. Um, for merchants, one of the things I'm starting, to, I'm, I'm, I, I want to talk with somebody about is how do you approach the decision of working with an agency versus hiring somebody in house? When is that the right decision? Um, yeah. You probably actually you probably have some some thoughts on that because. You know, sure. like you already demonstrated, you're willing to say what's best for the merchant, even if it's not directly in your wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And always have been um, for, for better and for worse. I think um, that's, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of merchants out there where, and I kind of go back to that profile I was talking about, right? So I'm a Magento merchant. And I value flexibility and the ability to pivot quickly. I want to add a new product type. I want to put up a new landing page. I want to do a lot of things. If that's important to me, having someone on staff or like dedicated subcon dedicated contractor relationship is huge, right? Because sure, I mean we're we're an agency, we support a lot of merchants, so we have pretty quick turnaround times. But there's there there, there's, there isn't if you can afford it, there's no substitute for having somebody an FTE like at your beck and call who can be in all the planning meetings, right? Because when you're working with a contractor, the meter's running. Right, <laughs> but when you have an FTE, you can waste their time in meetings all day long, um, and sometimes actually that's really valuable because they can provide guidance much earlier into the planning phase of a particular particular opportunity or, or initiative than than you're going to get with a with a, a contract relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're they're there, they know, and and, and if if they're on prem, like if they're if they're there, right? They can go talk to the people in the warehouse. They can go talk to your marketing team, right? Like, right. like that's. Uh, but it's expensive. Like, yeah, it, and it, yeah, right. But at the same time, you know, it's like the clock isn't ticking. But it is, you know. You, you're probably not thinking about it in that way. Right. Um, but it is. And if you're smart about the way you budget things, you compare one cost off of another and then there's skill set. Like almost everybody I talk to wants a full stack developer <laughs> and there are. Five years of experience. What's that? With five years of Magento 2 experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's another show title. You're killing me. Uh, yeah. So, and, and there are, I think increasingly, I sort of consider myself and I was back end, but I got into front end and now I like to dip into both. Um, but that's a little, you know, and then if you want to find somebody that has some of that strategy experience and um, design marketing. So it's an interesting uh, question. Like what, you know, when is it the right fit for different, you know, type of type of uh, type of deal. Um, Geography makes a huge is a huge part of it, too, right? Like, like where am I? What is my ability to get a developer to live in to live where I am, right? Like, if you're if I'm in a major market, I can probably find devs. They're going to be expensive. But if I'm in, uh, you know, rural, you know, rural Missouri or rural Tennessee or something like that, like, yeah, you know, like maybe a harder sell. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and then there's, uh, there's remote, which, you know, is interesting. Some people have tried it out, you know, uh, and it's worked. Some people, people usually have some degree of, of, you know, maybe there's one guy that used to work in house. Now he's remote type of a thing. And, and that's, that's kind of a, a an interesting uh, thing, but, um, yeah, a lot of, uh, and, and, you know, the other thing is, I was talking to somebody recently and they have, you know, an agency that you know turnaround time is, is is starting to get too slow it takes two weeks to get anything done things are going back to uh, offshore to get done and they want somebody uh in-house um so my first thing is well maybe you just need to work with a more responsive agency honestly uh, and in fact yes <laughs> <laughs> i know a guy <laughs> um you know so yeah. i think that's you know, I think that I, I almost I want to build. I actually have been thinking I want to build like an interactive quiz type thing where you input a whole bunch of different things, and it you know. I like it. 
I like it. So and it, it's like a wizard. It's like answer these questions and we'll recommend for you like what, what you should do. And then maybe you've got some lead gen going where like, and here's three names that you should call. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. Throw like, in like a Star Wars reference. If they get the reference, like boom, they go. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right. And, and uh, so, you know, that would be, uh, and, and, and throw in some little trick questions. Like you're saying, like there's like, how technically proficient, how much do they know about their own business? How much documentation do they? So maybe you throw in a question like, you know, how much, uh, how do you track inventory? How does your, in, how does your accounting department get for, you know, and see if that, they have an answer. Those are all, I mean, that, that, that's the type of stuff that we do pre-sale and, 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 or in a consultative basis all the time. Um, Cause you just can't, you, you can't make a dis, an informed decision without going through pretty deep into the, in, in our, in our view. Right. I mean, um, I could throw out a, 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 you know, a fixed bid and I could, I could, I could make up a number and say, Hey, um, Oh, you want a Nintendo site? What's your budget? Okay. Yeah. We can build you a, we can build your site for example. That amount of money. Sure. Oh, stand by for change orders. Uh, once we learn more about like your weird AS 400 in the basement that <laughs> like, only communicates to like punch cards or something like, uh, we, we, you want to surface that stuff earlier rather than later. Yeah. Do yeah. you guys do fixed bid? Uh, no. Okay. No. no this no. is another conversation I've been wanting to have for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think. I think some of us. I think a whole bunch of people. I think. I think Phil. Phil had this. Phil's a fixed bidder. Phil, yeah, he's a fixed bidder. Yeah, and, and Rob Toll here, and, and a few other folks uh, that went on for a long time in Twitter, into the Twitter land, like a whole day. <laughs> um, it was a lively discussion. It was a lively discussion, and yeah, I'm happy to have that that discussion. Um, uh, any any day of the week. How yeah. about this? How about this day of the week? <laughs> I, I'm I'm gaming. I'm gaming. So do you, so. Oh, no, dude, I mean, okay. I'll say, fixed bid can work. Agile can work. Agile is built around the idea that that there's going to be continual change in the life of a software project. That you you don't know everything up front. You can't and actually shouldn't try to know everything up front about what you're going to build. You should make informed, educated guesses, but you should have a, Agile is about a process of managing scope change inside of a project with the assumption that there is going to be scope change. And at least in my view, Waterfall is built around the idea that you can know everything about the scope before you start the work and that it won't change. And that if it does, you're going to get a big change order and, every, and there's going to be this, this very sort of long bureaucratic process of identifying and approving the change before you do it. Um, but you, it's to be avoided, yeah. right? I, I would liken that to typically, it's a black box when you do when you do when you do sort of waterfall development. Um, that's 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 fixed bid. Obviously, waterfall and fixed bid are not exactly the same thing. They're they're, they're talking about things, but they usually go together. Um, especially when you're talking to merchants who, hey, my CFO says I need to give you, I need I need one dollar amount on one timeline. Yep. Yep. Go yeah. To unlock how, how, and um, it can be hard to sort of sell agile in that in that in that world. But we we. We've been doing it for years, and uh, it's it works actually pretty well. So you guys uh, ba have have done zero fixed bid for. We used to be. We used to do it actually. But, we used to do for years. Now, no, we don't. No. Yeah, no. and have uh, and I don't know if you can share this stuff, but but um, the, uh, do you guys have a, a s s common way of structuring uh, projects uh, engagements? Well, yeah. Um, I'm not, well, it's, it's agile TNM, right? I mean, um, we'll do a lot of, we'll do a lot of presale. We'll, we'll probably do go a lot deeper in presale discovery than, than I think most, most folks do, uh, which is why I've had these conversations so many times. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And from that, you get a scope of work with estimates with, and we work, I always work, you know, Rob and, and, and the rest of the solutions architects here, right. We work with the senior engineer to sort of like really vet out those, those estimates and because we only work on Magento. It, there's a lot of like hyper focus on like, no, we pretty much know what it's going to take to like go add an attribute here or, you know, um, go build a page there. Um, it's, and then, and then you just, you, you, you know, you get, you get a team, you assemble the team, you get a project manager, you get a, a, a technical lead, like a senior, senior engineer, you know, uh, we right. have several. Um, and you go to town, usually it's a two week sprint cycle. You know, you're constantly doing demonstrations, um, nice. You, know, like you, 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 you the, the backlog is always changing. Stuff is stuff surfaces when in the middle of the project. Company changes direction. Um, 
a feature that they thought they needed, they decided they, they don't want to need. A lot of times, actually, to your point, frequently, actually, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get an RFP or something, you, you know, and you've got like this giant list of things. And you, yeah. so you produce, uh, it's no fun, right? You, RFP responses are the worst, but so you respond and then you get into it and, and it's like a third of that stuff like vanishes like immediately. Like, well, we're going to bring that in house. We're not going to do it. Like, <laughs> like, we'll make that phase two. We'll make that phase three. Right. right. That's fine. Actually, that's, that's a okay. If you, the merchant, don't think the value is there for that particular thing, don't do it. And if we don't think the value is there, we'll tell you. We'll still do it if you still want to do it. If you if you insist, but like, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 interesting. I've been thinking of a a, a merchant I'm talking to that I want to sell it a little bit, and and I really I don't you know I don't want to I don't want to hijack your. Content. No, no, no. It's no, it's totally cool, man. I, I, I love it. Um, I'm, I'm curious about the way people structure, you know, their engagements. I'm thinking about a merchant that really wants a fixed bid and, you know, they were working with somebody previously on an hourly basis and things weren't getting done. They weren't specialized in Magento because that's the, you know, that's, that's the first thing right. I start to ask is, well, who is the person you work with? Cause I'll usually know them, um, if they're in the mm -hmm. Magento space and, um, so that you know they've had a bad experience going time material oh, all the time all the time yeah and they're kind of overreacting against that so how do you you know how do you speak to that obviously you know if you have a reputation that speaks for itself and they're warm contact you know they they'll listen to you but mm -hmm. you know references we 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 spend a lot of time in, in the, we try to build relationships and earn trust because fundamentally, to make Agile work, you have to be in a position of mutual trust. We have to trust who we're dealing with, and they have to trust us. And you can you use that to accomplish your shared goals together. If there isn't, if it's an adversarial relationship, we we will walk away and have we've we've turned down very large deals before because it just the 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 fit the relational fit felt like it was going to be a um, um, just a, a, basically a. a an arm wrestling contest over every single piece of scope and every single invoice. And it's just like, you know, um, that's probably not, that's not who we want to be. Yeah. So, totally. It's, it's, you got to earn, earn the trust, but we have a lot, we, because of, you know, we have a lot of references and we send people, you know, multiple merchants. Hey, here's people who are working with us. Here's people who've worked with us. They'll tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. Right. 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 So maybe you say, Hey, look, uh, if you, you know, here's another merchant that had a bad experience time and materials and then they had a good experience with us go talk to them and and figure it out yep. um right. yeah no that's interesting and and you know some people will 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 do a a smaller fixed bid project so okay fine look let's do 20 hours we'll give us your list we'll we'll tell you the things we're going to get done and uh you know we're probably going to eat some of that as one uh inevitably does and then at least you can get it you can kind of find a little bit of a happy medium um, right. Yep. But. We've talked about, and that's something that's that, that I mean, I, we get asked constantly, right? We, you know, everybody really wants to do that. So I would say, right. as, as a general matter, of course, you know, I can't recall the last time that ever happened here. Right. I'm sure it has. I'm sure it may happen again at some point in the future, but that's a, that's an executive sort of like, that's not something that there's a normal process for here. That is like, you go, you go, you climb up the mountain and ask. You got, ask. you got to arm wrestle, you got to arm wrestle Kurt. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool, man. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Oh, and, yeah. Likewise. Um, and so where can, uh, where can people find you online if they want to exchange Star Wars references or? I'm on Twitter, um, at Aaron Sheehan. Uh, and uh, you can often find me uh, commenting uh, on Magento-related stuff. I'm uh, follow the real Magento hashtag, uh, which has become kind of like a weird place uh, occasionally, but I'm still there. Um, obviously at Classic Llama, so um, Aaron.Sheehan at ClassicLlama.com, um, you know, reach out, say hi. Uh, I will be, next week I will be at B2B Online in Chicago. Oh, cool. um, we have, we'll have, a, we'll have a, a, a small booth there, a small team of us are going. I'll be moderating a table discussion. So if you're in Chicago, Ooh, you want to drop by. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Awesome, man. That sounds yeah, good. We'll, the, we'll be at IRC along with the rest of the known world. Um, cool, cool, cool. June. Good so, stuff. We got to talk B2B one of these days, too. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, it's well, exciting. Hey, yeah, B2B's heating up. Um, all right, man. Good stuff. I will see you very soon. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you.